That's part of why I like it. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Salem Township Planning Commission meeting, June 17th, 2024. We'll call the meeting to order at 7.31. If you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Common? Here. Frost? Here. Huntsman here. Wiebendowski? Here. McLaughlin? Here. Merlot? Here. Rizzo? Here. <laughs> approval of the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted <laughs> for June 17th, 2024. Second. All those in favor of approving the June 17th, 2024 agenda as submitted, say aye. 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 Opposed? None? Okay. Good evening and welcome to the June Township, June Township Planning Commission meeting. Uh, the copies of the agenda are in the back. We do have two public hearings tonight. Um, if you wish to address the Planning Commission during public comment, please uh, come forward to the podium when recognized, provide your name and address, make sure you've signed the sign-on sheet. Um, please begin your remarks by stating your name for the benefit of the commissioners. There is a public hearing on Two public hearings on the agenda and if you have comments about those applications we would ask you to please save your comments until that agenda item so they can be part of the record for public hearing if you have any cell phones or other device that might uh, be disruptive please either switch it to silent or turn it off thank you very much Pretty formal, isn't it? okay public comment None. Chairperson comment. None. Okay. Public hearing. This time we'll open the public hearing for the uh, text amendment drive through window and local commercial zoning districts. We'll open. Right? Yes. Yep. Open the public hearing at 7.34. If you would like me to give a brief explanation of the proposal. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so you have in your packet a memo from us uh, outlining this, so I'll go into just a little bit of detail, but happy to answer any additional questions you might have. But ultimately, the applicant has presented a <clears throat> petition to amend the zoning ordinance to allow for drive-throughs in the local commercial zoning district. Um, currently, drive-throughs uh, for restaurants are only permitted in the general commercial district and the um, highway commercial district. Both of those areas are generally centered around the area of um, Godfordson and M14, where we have planned urban services. Um, typically, drive-throughs are kind of recognized as uh, a use that is more auto-oriented and more consistent with some of those um, uses that would be in the general commercial or the heavy commercial district. Local commercial districts have tended to be reserved for some of those more uh, kind of neighborhood commercial uses that are serving that immediately surrounding uh, community. Um, we put in the uh, memo that you have uh, the standards that apply to those um, uses in the ordinance so those are there's about uh, there are eight of them um, 
I won't go through each of them, but they are intended to, to ensure that that use is compatible um, with, with the um, other uses in the area and that they function appropriately. Um, we also put in uh, the ordinance kind of the intent from the zoning ordinance for that local commercial district, and that's really just kind of what I described to you is that it's supposed to provide for those um, residents in the immediate surrounding area and not really a, a regional kind of commercial type of use. Um, so that's from section 10.210 of the zoning ordinance. Um, so just so you know, and there wasn't a lot of detail put in the application, the application was just essentially we want to do drive-throughs in the local commercial district. Um, the applicant is uh, representing the property at the corner of North Territorial and Pontiac Trail. Um, there are a few uh, local commercial districts that exist in the township, and those are all along Pontiac Trail, and there's one on Seven Mile. Um, so there's, there's really just a few of them. Um, the master plan does call for those nodes along Pontiac Trail on the intersection of Seven Mile and Five Mile and, Pontiac and uh, North Territorial to be local commercial. Um, so if you saw fit to uh, recommend approval for this, if this zoning text amendment did get changed, then that drive-through um, use could be applicable to any one of those local commercial districts. Um, they did not indicate whether they wanted to make that a conditional use or a special use, so that's something for your consideration. And um, didn't indicate any other standards that might be applicable, so if you did want to move forward with this, you might consider other standards that you might think would be appropriate in order to make that compatible. Um, and then with all rezonings or text amendment proposals, there are some findings in the zoning ordinance. Um, and we go through in our memo and kind of outline what those findings are that you should discuss as you go through uh, your discussion after the public hearing. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have, or you know, after you hear comments from the public, I could answer questions at that point as well, too. Zoning, uh, you can come with a, you can get a special uh, permitted condition type use without changing zoning, correct? Um, no, so that, that use is either permitted in a district or it's not permitted in a district. Or it could be a special use in the district, but it has to be listed as a special use in that district. So table 20 of the zoning ordinance indicates all of the uses and all of the zoning districts and that table indicates whether that use is a permitted use in that district an accessory use in that district or a special land use in that district or not permitted at all currently this use is not permitted at all Yeah, I mean, if, if the applicant wants to give a presentation, you could certainly ask for that now. Would you like to well, speak? Sure. Yeah, I, I put the application, and the reason we put the application is an intersection that probably has no uh, residential adjacent to the property, and it's uh, one of the kind of like highly type location on two major inter intersections, the North Arterial and Pioneer Trail. And we thought that it would be convenient for, for, for customers to have the drive through available to them that if they go early morning to work or, or if they're coming back late, they can stop at the location and that's drive through and pick up small items or, or coffee and go on with their daily routine. So we don't have no restaurant in the place and we have no intention to open a restaurant. So is it just out of your store, just items out of the store? store. They, they do sell sandwiches in that store. Okay. They sell sandwiches that they are in the, in the refrigerator and they do sell those items. But they, they do not make any kind of food, no fast food. Do you think that with um, that type of a store and the traffic, 
that you're trying to uh, serve, the customers you're trying to serve, that it, it would be, it's, it's feasible to, I think it's gonna be some sort of limit on what thing you can get through the drive-through or? What? There, when I walk into a store, it, it takes me a while to get out of there unless I know exactly what I'm looking for and finding it. You know, there's a lot of things. So I'm just <coughs> trying to envision what your vision is. Well, the, the drive-through in that location we sell basically the people that they come early morning, they want a, a coffee or, or a snack that we sell, or they want a sandwich, or uh, maybe uh, some soda that we can also sell in the drive. So, so it's like a limited type thing. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be open 24 hours? No, it will be open from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock. So Paul, just in general, thank you very much. Do you want to finish getting comments from the public and close the public hearing and then we can discuss? <coughs> oh yeah, that'd be a good idea. Um, yes ma'am. Um, I'm Jennifer Hayes. I didn't see a sign in sheet, I apologize, but my name is Amber Wardia and I just recently moved into the place across from the former, will be former Edith's Market at North Territorial Plant Trail, um, and I opened the cafe there. Um, when I saw the building was released, it was uh, using a drive-up system. Um, so that was part of the reason why I leased the building. I thought, you know, that'd be great for what I was trying to do there. And uh, as soon as I um, signed the lease, <laughs> I was told that I, by the township, that I couldn't have any type of uh, drive-up window at all. And so I definitely support uh, drive-ups. We also open um, pretty early in the morning, and a lot of the customers have gotten used to being able to drive up. And they they think that we don't, they think that it's our decision not to let them drive up anymore, and I have to explain that the township allowed it during COVID, but then decided not to allow that. <coughs> and it's very confusing to the customers. And uh, I mean, even though we're post-COVID, I think a lot has changed. Um, with people and, and how they shop. Uh, people really do like to do the curbside pickups and the drive throughs They, I think they have a lot of social anxiety now. I'm noticing that with my customers. The ones that do come in, a lot of times will tell me right away that they've been wanting to come in, but they weren't sure what we were all about. I had someone come in today and she was really hesitant to sit and eat her, uh, her, her food that she bought because she told me she has social anxiety. And I think that's byproduct of uh, COVID. And I think that people are really used to just going and doing the drive through they're busy. And um, I know change is hard, but I really think that's a natural progression for just consumer habits. And it's not like it's a downtown with people walking around. So I don't see it being an impact to like any pedestrian activity. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, yes, sir? Hi, Jim Rock called Salem Road. Um, so I would like the Planning Commission to consider that an applicant, if it's going to have a drive through do a traffic study. Um, obviously that area has a new flow pattern with the roundabout. It's got extremely heavy traffic. The last couple of weeks it's been really heavy. And uh, with the impact of having a drive through how does that modify the roundabout and the MDOT and Washington County Road Commission studies that have been done. So we see a number of accidents out there. I'm not opposed to having drive-throughs, but uh, it's going to be important to how that comes on and off those main thoroughfares. And I think it's incumbent upon the applicant to do a traffic study to prove that whatever they're going to do is not going to impact that roundabout. Well, what we're talking about here is changing the ordinance so that anybody in local commercial we're not specifically talking about this address, correct? Correct. So, good point that yes, it may apply to here, but that would apply to, that would be something we consider to put on there contingent to you know, a special case in a local or something along those lines. So, a, a traffic study or something like that. But it might not be inappropriate for, for all drive throughs, yeah. 
Right. But what we are talking about here is for any local in Salem Township. So this, we, we consider this, we do something like this. It's for seven in Pontiac, it's for seven mile road, it's for five in Pontiac or wherever else. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. I also didn't see the sign up sheet, uh, Doug Stromer. Uh, I had the property. Sorry, we didn't put one out. <laughs> <laughs> Anne's cringing over there, that's okay. <laughs> uh, we have the property at some of the Pontiac the Garden Center that we're developing. Um, I was kind of forced to do a traffic study too uh, before I could do the development for my site plan submission. Um, that really wasn't what the reason why I'm standing up, but I did want to make that point. When you're talking about a drive-through uh, type of situation for any of the local commercial, would that also include, because I know she mentioned post-COVID, a lot of the stores still have like a pickup area, like where you order something and you have a pickup area. So with these two things, would it mean the same thing? Would you be able to drive in, not get out of your car, or come out and pick it up? So I just wanted to have that thought about it a little bit. Because it, it could be, it could be kind of the same thing, where you would like order something out of mind, and then you could come pick it up. So I think that they might mean the same thing, even though they're worded different. So. Probably you will find the differences between a person parking in a designated area, like for a pickup of something, as opposed to a series line going through where they're all being serviced at one point. A pickup could be you could have five people walking out and delivering to a customer at the same time, whereas you know, a drive-through kind of in, in implies that maybe it's one point, maybe there's two windows or something like that, but it's a serious <coughs> flow through that. So traffic, parking, people yeah. traffic could certainly be different here. Yeah, I just was kind of thinking back to what her point was, yeah. uh, the post-COVID situation, how things kind of are working these days. That's what Thank you. Yep. Okay. Linda. Opposed to traffic city, they're pricey, and you can handle vehicles in the driving window. It's handled on the site plan through how you stack the vehicles. And having been probably one of the few people in the room, they got put through the ringer trying to get a drive through window for property in the township. You guys know what a traffic study costs? And you want that for a small business that we're trying to encourage? Washtenaw County handles the roads. They're their roads. They have rules for site distance. We shouldn't be doing Washtenaw County Road Commission's work. We should let them do their work. Don't take on somebody else's headache. And when we got our driving window, Paul worked with us on how does it stack within the property. And that, that's a requirement you ought to consider. Not what happens on a road that's a township has no say over because somebody comes in here and tells you that's the idea that that's ludicrous furthermore the, the whole purpose of a roundabout is so it's slow speeds yes there are accidents in roundabouts because a lot of people don't know how to leave them but they're at a much slower rate of speed than the intersection would be if it was just a normal flow of traffic where one direction stops and one does not and you, Washington County, again, go to the Road Commission, it's right on their website why they do roundabouts and what they believe the benefits to be. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I see another hand over here? No? Going twice. Okay. So we call the public hearing at seven fifty. hearing we just 
that's Paul, or do we go to the next public hearing? Yes, it does. So how do we do that? How do we fix that? We take a motion to amend the agenda right now. Yeah, okay. after each topic. Yep. Can we have a motion to amend the agenda? I'll make a motion to amend the agenda. Have a discussion after each topic. Do the new business item. I have a second. Second. Okay. We're gonna have one more time. Do I have a second? <laughs> For the motion? Yes. Because you guys both said at the same time. Okay, no, Daryl. Okay, thank you, Daryl. Okay. Does this be a roll call or does it have to be Okay. All those in favor of amending the agenda to have the new business item discussed after the, the individual public hearing item. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay. No. Text amended drive through window in local zoning district. Especially with the new roundabout that was opened, and not necessarily a traffic study, but we do need to look at how that traffic flows and how it would flow in and out of these businesses and what it would affect that roundabout traffic, and especially in the morning. And the location, location of it on the property. Yeah, I think I think there are a lot of a lot of questions with this one, um, and but we have to remember we're not just amend, um, making an amendment to this particular location. We're opening it up to the other ones as as well, and there's a there's a lot involved in space. I know we've discussed that property before, and we thought it was pretty tight. But I don't know if there have been changes since then. Um, I know there were a lot of space requirements in regards to in regards to stacking um, cars to keep them out of the road and, and uh, not impede the traffic within the other for the other aspects of your business on the site. I think we need to look at how it kind of how it changes the face of our community. I understand that COVID has made an impact on a lot of things um, in people. Uh, I think my questions and first priority would be how does it impact the look of Salem Township as a whole as an agricultural meeting does it does it fit with our our vision and the master plan of putting drive-throughs in the local commercial I do understand that in a small business and trying to meet those needs and there aren't a lot of residents right around there so that traffic, the pedestrian traffic, isn't there. Um, anyone else? There, there are setbacks also, 100 feet uh, from any intersections or two public roads. So there's, there are setbacks that have to be looked at. That's what it is in general, not necessarily the reasons it's local. We're, we're talking about creating a whole new zone where it's kept. Can I ask the way this public hearing was posted to the public? How did it read? Because if if I were living at Seven Mile and Pond, and you know, I understood that the piece of property that I'm built next to was coming up for possibly being allowed for a drive-through usage, I would be here, right? So I'm I want to make sure that the public and I, the public 
was clearly informed that this could affect, this wasn't talking about Pontiac Trail and North Territorial. This was talking about seven in Pontiac. This was talking about the, the, the store, you know, I'm guessing it's the store right up here on Seven Mile uh, Country Fair. Best fried chicken. Oh, gosh, chicken. Anyway. The Log Cabin store. That's, that's the, the Log Cabin store. Seven Mile Trail. He's also seven talking about the ones about the different store. That? So that that's I want to make sure, yeah. sure of that because if that wasn't done cleanly, then we probably have a lot more people from the public that may want to have their voice heard. So does someone have the, the what the notice read for what was a public hearing for tonight? Yeah. So the the public hearing indicated that there was an application for a text amendment. The public notice indicated that we were holding a public hearing to consider a text amendment to allow for drive-throughs in the local commercial zoning district. It is not required when you're doing a text amendment to send it to property owners. It's right, just required to, to, to the specific address. Because there's no particular specific address associated with okay. this. So thank you, you. great, you know, we've been belt and suspenders. They've, they've been properly Well, it's been, it's been notified through the newspaper of local circulation, and that's the only re requirement that we have for that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's generic, and people don't read those, so they're not yeah. here. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. My only issue against it is I don't know what the flow of the traffic is going to come. How is it going to go into the window and go out? Because you got kind of a trail to the east of the, the corner, and the only end of the property is north of the street store currently right. there's an opening right there and then on the south side on territorial is just the one uh, end uh, the west side of the almost the, the line and there's you now how is that traffic going to get back out into the circle at that time of the morning or that time of the evening because you can only if for a drive-in window you can only go in one way and out uh, out the other you can't come in both ways and go out the same way you came in. Unless you go around the whole facility, but then you're obstructing that entrance uh, for the drive through window. Once again, we are not addressing, um, I don't know what to do business, well, Edith's Market. Everybody here knows that this is Edith's Market. We are not addressing specifically Edith's Market and their conditions. This gentleman is simply the catalyst for trying to change the language that would allow his property as well as many other properties within the township. So we, we can't just consider his case and be making it pending how this would be handled or that specifically handled to allow it. I think we have to back to what's our zoning ordinance say, what, what does our township plan say, and what are we as people on this, with this, duty to the township responsible to do. So I think we need to back right back up to the plan, the township plan, as to what, as we, as part of this group, sit there and do protect what's our mindset to looking at things like this, changes to existing or new things as they come in. And, and Bart, I, and I, I agree with that 100%, and that's why I said one of the things we want to look at is, is to start with our master plan. Does this, does this, is this included as part of the vision for Salem Township? And Bart, you and I may have been yeah. one of the only ones. We addressed this drive-through thing a, a, a number of years ago. And I think part of the intent, and correct me if I'm wrong, or Linda, um, the intent of not having drive-throughs was to keep it more small town, slow paced. So that was the intent back then. I know a lot of things have changed. I don't want to be a curmudgeon or anything like that. But you know what, what? what's important to me is I feel as not me as an individual, but me as a planning commissioner who's been here and have heard multiple people speak about keeping our township as, as rural and as agriculturally friendly and not and, and, and be cautioned. I've been cautioned. We've all been up here. Been cautioned on the slide 
of expanding the commercialism within our township. And I think that's a question we should all ask ourselves. You know, does this do that? What is the impact to this? Is there any impact at all? Does it meet with the vision? Yes. I don't think your vision deals with minutia. Should a business have a driving window or should it not? I think part of the vision of business in the community is that we want we want certain services available to the public. People want food, or they want to get gas, or they want whatever fill in the blank. And your role is to make sure that it's the best for the community. But you also have to allow businesses and tools to be viable. Because if they're not viable, they can't operate in Salem Township. And what I'm hearing from these businesses, and I would concur, because of COVID, there is now an expectation for businesses that never did it before that you can drive through and pick stuff up. Or as you guys already referenced, you can park. And so I, I think that's what you're, you're facing now, is that these businesses to be viable here in Salem Township to make a go of it need to go to the next progression. And so I think that's what you need to ask. Do we want to retain business in the township? If so, what do we need? And you do the same thing for agriculture, so you already do it for us. And I think you just need to take that same mindset to your businesses tonight before you. Thank you again. And that that it, that it, that is another thing. That's why I'm saying there's multiple things we need to think about and look at. The whole purpose of local commercial is to serve the surrounding community. So that that's the given, right? That's the given. Okay. If I may, um, is it okay if I ask another question? Um, if you could wait, and we'll let the planning commissioners, sure. and then we can. Uh, what's that? That. That's true. I know. Yeah, she's, no, I know. She seems like she's part of the plan. So that's right. I apologize. I would just want to try to see if we had any more questions out here because she's almost kind. Of, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, with my building having a drive-through may not even be feasible. What about a drive-up window? Does that fall under the same category? Because that's what the flower bar was doing is a drive-up window, and where we clearly mark one one entrance. It's just the entrance, and one is just the exit, and people drive up. I don't understand. I'm sorry. I mean, ice cream stands do it in small towns. Well, I'm curious about the question um, with the pickup. You know how it, and how that's impacted too. And it's hard to debate all this stuff. We we don't really have a, a plan. Or anything we don't know really know what it looks like there could be lots of options that's why we need to think about all of them I so windows or that's all we got a different a, subject or a different deal if, you, if you're driving your vehicle up to a window and getting something served to you from inside it's the same it's if, you're, if you're driving up there and they're bringing your product to where out to you is that what you're talking about, about? No, um, instead of going all the way around the building, um, they would just drive up to the window and then exit the other side. So it's not like a drive through. I guess when I think of drive through, I think of going all the way around. Um, this would be just like a drive up. And a lot of ice cream stands do it. They they have like that speaker, but it's just one designated window. And those are in small towns too, and those have a lot more pedestrian traffic even. From a practical standpoint, it's it's the same. Whether you whether you're whether you're yeah, queuing yeah. around the building or driving up in front of the building is inside. How does the customer then if you do it your way? How do they know how do you know what they want? There are speakers that you can buy actually online and it's a headset that you wear and so it'll be when someone pulls up to that window and you can communicate with them right from your kitchen without going to the window and then you can take the things over to the window. It's a little strange. It's a drive-through. It's all drive through. Everything's a drive through. Right. Yes. Okay. And if you pull up and somebody runs something out, that's different. If you're pulling up into a parking space and somebody's bringing something out to your car, that's different. Okay. okay. You you could go inside or they can come out to you. That's a that's a different situation altogether. Because then you're in a designated parking space. 
So I apologize, I should have done this public comment. I live on Pontiac Trail, Bruce Reed live on Pontiac Trail, and just let you know, since most of these businesses, uh, the local commercial are on Pontiac Trail, that's a tough road for pulling in and pulling off of during the traffic hours. It ends all the way from eight mile all the way to the stop sign at Dixie Road, um, except for the few spaces in between um, seven mile, uh, you know, the, the mile roads that have no business on them. Um, you can maybe get in and out, but I have a hard time, even when traffic slows down, getting from six mile on the Pontiac Trail or getting out of my driveway and getting into my driveway. Sometimes the traffic is backed up, and I'm close to six miles, the traffic's backed up, even with the turnaround, all the way back to my driveway. That's three quarters of a mile. Um, and it's very, it's just a high traffic pass through road. So just please consider that if you're making a decision to do that. Pioneer Trail is a pass through road, and it's high traffic, high volume flow, and the road commission's been dealing with that for years. That's why we have to. You see a lot of changes in Salem Township compared to 40 years ago. And you see more and more subdivision goes up almost every year. More and more cars come to the community. So it's not the days of, of horse and buggy. We don't see it. We see pickup trucks one after another of this few weeks. So of course those businesses, they're not going to spend tens of thousands of dollars to create a stressful way of doing business for themselves and the customers. I'm sure a lot of these places that look on businesses, they're going to go invest their time and money with engineers and special people to, or the township to just put a window. It's, it has to be convenient, it has to make sense. And like the flower shop across the street, they, they sh it will help them that they don't have to have too many people come inside they could come to the window and pick up whatever they order it, either they order online or they order by phone. So it's, it did not create a bunch of people come from Ann Arbor or come from uh, Brighton yeah. and make conjunction on this uh, intersection. So I think it will not be uh, just spread all over the town. So maybe some, some people need to make sense for them, maybe they're going to do it. But if it doesn't make sense, they're not going to go. Even if, if we get approved or she gets approved, I don't think everybody else is going to just follow down the road. this case. It has to make economic sense for them and safety. And we did a study, we have engineering, that they stack the cars on their drawing. I think uh, the township has a copy of that, which is probably going to come up, that shows on the on their drawing, it shows the safety and the way that these cars will stack up and how they get into the property from uh, North Territorial, how they get into the property and goes stack up behind that window from the Honey Trail. So all these issues they've been considered in the drawing of the site, site plan. Yeah, I believe when we worked on the uh, plan for that corner, that was kind of during the traffic circle consideration, but what the traffic, the traffic circle changed in design from what I believe we originally saw on paper. Not that that's worth a hill of beans right now, just FYI. But yes. When you saw plans come through for Edith's in the past, the drive through or the roundabout was not part of those plans. Right. It was. Here's, here's how we come in for fuel stations, the two different islands, how many cars could be in between, how to make the swing, how to make the turns out on the planet for North Territory. So, but guys, once again, we're here as planning commissioners to interpret, protect what we're charged to do by our township plan, our master plans. Yeah, so, the, tra the traffic is already there. That's that's not really the that's not really the traffic is already there that it's not really the issue that uh, there's a lot of things going through you know our brains I'm sure but um and it's just a high traffic area and we're a cut through community everybody's cutting through these businesses are just trying to capitalize and take advantage of that which is a good thing 
It's a smart thing to do. I mean, we we need to, what's that? Oh, sure. So I, I understand that. I don't, I don't think there needs to be a traffic study. Um, unless Paul says there needs to be from <laughs> our ordinance, but I mean, you have the ability to ask for a traffic study with any site plan that comes through. Doing? Okay. So if, if you want more information on a particular site plan, if something looks like it's particularly problematic or yeah. you're not sure about what kind of trip generation a particular use would have, yeah. um, certainly if you were wondering about the potential stacking space needs or something like that, we can look at ch trip generation manuals, right? Like, so if a McDonald's goes in, we kind of know based on the, <clears throat> the location, the traffic uh, counts per day, and what a typical restaurant like that takes, we would know kind of what the, right. the stacking space needs were. Okay. And that's different than what we're talking about here. We're talking about local commercial, right? And it's you know, small businesses that service that local community, our local community. Well, just how they get through the how they get through the, the the property and the vision it is with the master plan. So correct. If you were to move forward with something like this, and your intent was that this would not allow for something like a, a McDonald's or a Tim Hortons or something like that, we would have to craft the language very specifically because, again, the, the request was vague. It was to allow for drive-throughs in a local commercial district. Local commercial district does allow for restaurants, so if we don't, if you don't want to see... But aren't they limited on size and all that, right? Then I've seen some little itty-bitty Tim Hortons, too. Right. So, you again think about what you what you want to see here and if it's if it's not that then and you do want to move forward with with something that would allow for a drive-through for a small local business we've got to make sure we craft the standards in such a way that you're not going to end up with a you know chain chain uh, fast food restaurant that would fit in the criteria that we end up allowing for if we do that. does that make sense yes so if, if you end up providing direction to us as staff to update the ordinance and put some language together that would allow this, I need to hear from you what it is that you do and don't want to see here. I think it's important we get all these ideas and throw them out there because once somebody makes a suggestion, that's why there's seven of us, you know, it, it brings about more questions and, and I think that's a good thing. It would be nice if we had more public care too. Can I just ask you a question if I can say something? Well, if uh, the board decides to allow drive throughs um, can't, you know, you might allow one at Pontiac Trail, North Territorial, but, you, but one might not fit with their scope at like seven and, Pontiac, seven and Pontiac Trail. Can't the board at that time make that decision of what they're putting there? Now, from what I understand, working at EDA's market, is they want to add, I know that still is on the table about adding gas pumps, might be a whole new building. You know, what's that scope going to look like? And it's going to be hard to make a decision if we don't know what else is, what are they planning there? So the, the, there is a site plan that has been submitted. Um, it, it changed iterations a couple of times over the last month, so we didn't have enough time to review it before this meeting. Um, in addition, they are showing a drive-through, which is currently not a permitted use. Um, so if the Planning Commission and ultimately the board accept a change in the ordinance to allow for, for a drive-through, we would then review that site plan against the standards in the ordinance for drive-throughs. And, and as I mentioned, there are eight standards right now that may or may not be sufficient for what we're trying to do if you do decide to allow for it. So if you if you said yes, drive-throughs are permitted use or special use in the local commercial district subject to those existing standards, then we would review that site plan against those standards. So it might be denied if it doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit those standards. You could also say that it can only be in a standalone use. You can, you know, I mean, if you don't think that it would fit well to have that in conjunction with a gas station, that could be a restriction that you place on something like this, if there is a, you know, legitimate reason to, to place that restriction. Got 
Pam, I do think that we should look at it further because I don't think it would be <coughs> fair for the smaller businesses to just say, well, we don't allow that and not discuss it or make any changes until we go down that line because we're here to help you know, the small business and their communities and we can't be stagnant on this stuff. Well, wait. So we, we, I think we do need to wait on it, talk about it, make some changes. Well, we're here as a, as a whole for the for, for the community, not right. just the small businesses. But the small business, I mean, they are here for the community. Yes. And, uh, How, are there three areas in the township that are local commercial or four? Four. Is it the one that? Um, there is one on Seven Mile, the, the party shop on Seven, seven Mile. Seven Party Pontiac Trail. Isn't no, it? No, no. Seven in mile. the middle of just Seven Mile. Oh, okay. Country Fair. Country, Country Fair. Country Fair. Fair. Oh, okay, that's yeah, local commercial. Um, and then the Seven Mile and Pontiac, Five mm -hmm. Mile and Pontiac, and uh, yes. And those areas are all designated in the master plan as uh, potential local commercial areas, not by parcel or anything, there's a there's a, a, a node basically, there's a star in that area. So there's the potential that other properties in those areas could be rezoned in those three nodes along on the trail. This, the one uh, country fair is kind of, is what it is. No, it's zoned, it's zoned local commercial. It's just not really planned for any local commercial expansion in that area. But if you change the ordinance to allow for drive-throughs, they could potentially apply for one there as well. They'd have to redo their site plan. And Does that answer your question? I mean, the standard local commercial designation you know, looking in here doesn't really apply to our area because he's talking about, you know, foot traffic from adjacent neighborhoods. There is none of that. And with two acre minimums, I don't see that ever being a bunch of foot traffic. So, you know, there has to be another way of, I mean, we have local commercial. We'd like to have some commercial businesses there. Um, so, I mean, I, I think as a, a community service, I think a drive up is, is compatible with serving the local community. They aren't Starbucks. It's going to be a lot of people that are traveling through there anyway. It's just, will it work on the parcels? And I'm assuming that engineering and you would determine that this is just not going to work on this parcel. Or, yes, I think it can support you know the, tr the the traffic based based on those eight standards that's how we would review it to ensure that there's stacking space to ensure that the um you know drive through is not going to conflict with traffic coming to and from the site that is not going to uh create uh, back backups onto the public road mm -hmm. um so you know those are certainly considerations that we would make on an individual basis for each parcel, each property, if they came in and applied. Mm -hmm. What's the situation look like for someone that may be on agricultural residential and wants to get rezoned for local local commercial? Would, I, don't, I don't understand your question. Someone has a piece of property that's, I'll say, a, a lower commercial use than local commercial. I don't, what's the next one down? I don't. There, there's no, so it's by res ag or something. Yes. Okay. So, what does what does it look like for a person that's res ag that wants to cut off two acres, make it local commercial, get it rezoned for that, petitions for it, comes to this meeting and goes for that, and then puts up the drive-through, opens a McDonald's franchise. So, if that parcel was in the area that was designated for local commercial. And, and the township allowed for the rezoning, 
then any of the uses that are permitted or special uses in the local commercial, they could apply for and go through that site plan process or special land use process. And if you, if you change the ordinance to allow for drive-throughs in the local commercial, then that would be one of the things that they could apply for. How many corners at Pontiac and North Territorial are local commercial? Is it just the two, or is it all four? Um, I the tenters. The coffee, uh, flower shop, eat it, and I don't know what the southeast corner is. Yeah, the dentist office is office commercial. The other three corners are all local commercial. So the one that's wooded right now, southwest corner, is that triangle. It's yeah. Local commercial. Local commercial. My dad would say, "Be careful what you ask for. You may get it." In fact, you know that that local commercial zoning kind of stretches on down on the south side of Pontiac Trail, going towards Dixboro as well. Mm -hmm. Like Roman offs that whole area is um, local commercial as well. Mm -hmm. Probably unlikely, but I don't. I don't know. I, I guess I. I guess I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Wouldn't have the expertise. Well, yeah, I mean, that it does a regular septic, engineered septic, a, a septic system, and one. Okay. It is a. I, I'm thinking it's a detriment. No. I'll look into that. Very low. Probably. I mean, it's probably a, not, not part of their standard model. It's probably not part of their financing model. It's probably not part of their insurance model. But, but I, I'd certainly look into that. Even engineer field kind of. Put the kibosh to McDonald's. Because it's done differently than a regular one. An engineered field and a regular field. It's empty system. Yeah. If you have to have because of the ground, it doesn't hurt. If you go to an engineer, it's, and it's raised, it's not like a septic tank put into the ground and it's hidden somewhere. Engineer field, you can tell. I mean, there's, there's a mound of dirt. Sure, I'm familiar with them. And I don't know how, um, if we limit to it just two acres, or maybe the, the property at the, those corners should be larger than two acres for, for local commercial. Uh, but then you open the door for the chain uh, places to <coughs> pop in if they uh, uh, don't have, they have to put the septic system in and, and drill for a well. I mean, that would, that would all be regulated by the county health department. They would make a determination whether the proposed use could fit whatever septic system that they were working with. Thank you. So all that would go through the site plan as well for someone if they wanted um, you know to have their commercial it's your your property's well septic right it is it is well yeah. septic so the, the minimum lot area for local commercial is one acre on well and septic it is 20,000 square feet if there's sewer available but there are no there are no local commercial areas planned in any area that has sewer available so so one acre, one acre minimum for a local commercial. I would ask a question. Could I make a comment? Oh yes, sir. I was wondering if if it, the the commission could allow part to review the whole site plan and maybe they will be more comfortable to read and see the whole thing that they be more fair to the township and fair to us 
so that they, they make the decision based on seeing the whole traffic flow. And so we cut some of the build, actual portion of the building, so we made it, made it shorter in the new, new layout. So it's going to be 30, 40 feet farther away from the road, from the north territory, in order to create more space for the for the gasoline pumps and for the parking and all this. So I think if we reduce our whole site plan, uh, then just look at it and if it makes sense for the township and for us. If for us makes sense, that's why we apply for this part. We want to make sure that it's fair to all parties. I think I think you're right. I think there are a lot of unknowns that we're all thinking about right now, and it's difficult to make a decision when there's so many unknowns. It's not just your property. I mean, when these things come in, you know, we've got a, a small business in our community. We are always trying to help and support. What we're what we often struggle with is predicting the future, and in the in the unintended consequences. I think for me, those are those are just the questions. It's not, you know. Somebody zipping through for a coffee and a sandwich. I mean, that's you know, that's it would it would help your business. I think it would be great for your both your little businesses. Um, it, it's just that the, the unknowns and, and we're us trying to be prepared because we put our names on the bottom of this. We we don't want to do it. Um, we want to be completely prepared, and thoughtful to our whole community. By all means, I mean you. You could so you could. There's a couple of actions you could take. You could uh, um, postpone action and direct staff to draft a resolution recommending approval. But we don't really have any solid language at this point. You could postpone action, direct staff to draft a re resolution recommending denial, based on any findings that you've made tonight. Or you could postpone action and direct us to to craft some language that might be more consistent with some of the discussion that you had tonight in terms of protection of you know the, the rural character etc so um, i need for yeah. a list of bullet yeah. points of things we should be thinking of when considering this decision well there so there are not necessarily numbers and units type of engineering type of stuff but you know look at this this is a way you may want to look at this think think on this how would it affect here that's a way of looking at it Put some weighting against those things and go. Well, so th so the, those there are findings in our report. We've made some suggestions there that I would encourage you to kind of go through and, and think about at this point, if you'd like. Um, I, I think you I think you've touched on many of those topics tonight, as you've discussed. Yeah, we have an urban service district. You have an urban service district. So we have an urban system, service yeah. district just for yeah. a purpose. We, we created it for a purpose. We wrote the uses of that for a purpose. It was all protecting what the master plan for Selma Township wants us to do. Okay, I'll make a motion to po postpone action and direct staff to make changes to the proposal language for drive throughs for restaurants, fast food establishments, and the LC slash local commercial zoning district as discussed at tonight's meeting for further consideration. I'll second. To draft language so if if approved, that language would go into the zoning ordinance. I, I am for certainly investigation beforehand and talking points, not just I'd like to understand certainly a lot more of cause effect of all these things. Well, we can, we can, so you, you've got a motion on the table. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, let you guys discuss first. Discussion but but if you have, if you want me to answer questions, I'm happy to about what we can do. Uh, yeah, I think the proposal that's on the table is very fair. Uh, we don't want to stifle small business and certainly uh, being a small business owner, I understand uh, where we're at. Uh, you know, obviously with the master plan, things change, right? COVID happened, uh, the way business changed and we have to be flexible with that. I think the recommendation on hand is fair. Let's get some more information and consider uh, the different avenues and certainly move towards supporting small businesses however we can. 
Um, we can certainly draft language uh, to protect uh, the integrity of what we have going in Salem Township, but certainly if we can um, support small businesses and the way they provide service, certainly we want to move towards that direction and at least consider the options we have. So I would approve um, that direction. You got, you got, you got to update the, uh, the uh, zoning uh, books. Uh, first, before this decision can be made, if we're going to update it to have a allow drive through with any restrictions that we put in it, the ordinance, and then bring the gentleman back and go from there. But the ordinance has to be updated first in my eyes before we can go anywhere else. If you're intending to do that, yeah. Could I ask one clarifying question? <coughs> um, so in the in the motion, uh, you referenced fast food restaurants, but in your discussion, I kind of heard the idea that we don't want fast food restaurants. <laughs> Guys, and this is discussion point of the motion, right? We've had a first, we had a second, now we're discussing. Okay, so you're, you, you, want to, you, you want to support business, you want to encourage this, that, and the other. How many different drive-up services can you name right now that you wouldn't want? to protect the rural atmosphere and feeling of Salem Township when other areas in this township are specifically designated and allow businesses to have a drive through I am not here as my, per my own person with an opinion. I am here to protect the township master plan. That's what I signed up to. That's what I took an oath to. I'm not here for, I like these things, I don't like those things. I have an opinion, yes. That's not what I'm signed up to do. So I'll clearly say I'm, I'm not for drafting up a change to the ordinance because of two businesses knowing the potential of the other one acre lots that could be put up with drive throughs that would all have to be discussed hopefully properly mitigated in a zoning ordinance that would clearly go through all these points that were, I don't know how much how much could be discussed in, in one meeting or how much could be thought of in one meeting. Guys, this is huge. How many acres, how many acres are, are, are unused right now at Pontiac and North Territorial? 10, 15? Yeah, of the local commercial. Yeah. There's, a, there's a dozen. There's a dozen or so. Okay. So not that you know the bobs and wows of it uh, are going to come in best of best, worst of worst uh, are going to come into play. But you're talking about 10 to 15 drive up something is at Pontiac Trail in North Territorial. If you just make a change like this, you're talking about how many acres at five and Pontiac. There are areas in this township where people can develop and do this. Yes, we have two businesses at Pontiac and North Territory. One can still be a gas station because it's grandfathered in. If it wasn't, right, local commercial is not typically allows uh, service stations, gasoline service stations. So, um, sorry, the, uh, the, the legal nonconformity of that gas station has long since passed, but you right. did update the zoning ordinance to allow for small gas stations in the local commercial okay. three or four years ago. And so this is the first of which would, that would be coming into a place. That's what I'm trying to say here is I, I would like to see us, not necessarily align with me, I have my own ways of doing things obviously, but have a mindset of what our duty is here. Well, that's why we want to, yeah. that's why we need more information. We have to start with the master plan. That's why I said it's what it's what it looks like. I wasn't trying to, yeah. you know, Absolutely. play devil's okay. advocate and the impl implications of what's going to come to that. I say, what does it look like? But the unintended consequences is what we always talk about. And that is not just these two businesses, but what is, you know, have we all looked, have we all looked at the, at the map and thoroughly assessed? in the last couple of weeks since we've had this mm -hmm. to see what can go there. You know, that crystal ball portion. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's important. And, and what we're proposing right now is for a draft to be made up that in next month's meeting could possibly be approved. 
Well, and it has. It's discussion I, no, it's, too. It's, it's, I mean, no, 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 yeah, no doubt. No, no doubt about a draft. No doubt. Made up. It says to direct staff to make changes make to the changes. to the, make changes to a proposed language. So for drive-throughs and blah blah blah. So it's something that's proposed. It's nothing to me that says that's more discussion. Okay, so we're not saying we're changing up, it. We're not saying draft up an ordinance. So we can change it next commercial. next month. Okay, I interpret that a different way. If that's indeed, uh, then I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just I read. I just that's just the way I read it because well, it doesn't matter. Could, could I go back to my clarifying question though? <laughs> yes. That, uh, well, no, just in terms of uh, fast food restaurants, is that part of the intent or not? I don't think Salem has ever wanted a fast food no. restaurant in a local okay. general commercial when they can go right up the road so, and get one. So would you amend your motion then to remove the word fast food restaurants out? I mean, is, is that what we're saying? Well, unless you were to say no fast food restaurants, I mean, but that's what it already says, right? Or because you said in the beginning, you know this could this could happen so when you're taking direct staff to make changes to the proposed language for drive-through restaurants fast food so you could just kind of clarify what we want and what we don't want is that that was my takeaway from that thing not that yes we're going to put this in here but it's like we need another layer of clarification to get through the weeds well, so in, in that language, I think we were understanding that the intent was that this would serve as a fast food restaurant. So if we don't want fast food restaurants, that's what I'm asking. Okay. I think so, we don't all know what we want yet. So hang on a second. <laughs> hang on a second. Let's just go right to these people. Let's go right to these people that are sitting here right now. Is a drive through coffee shop a fast food restaurant? Is a drive through sandwich shop a drive through restaurant? So we're saying we could possibly draft it, but then take out and make illegitimate the, the two folks that are here asking for this change to be made. So then how do you differentiate between a, a one, we're, we're talking franchise, not fast food. We're talking a franchise. Okay, I want Panera there. Okay, great. Now is it a defendable position? Panera says, you allow this mom and pop shop that everybody loves, they know the owner by name, you know, we've had a long standing relationship, you let them come in, but we don't allow a Panera to come in. Panera's got lawyers. How do you defend that? How do you defend that? I'm just asking what you're saying. No, yeah, no, I'm, I'm getting those points that I'd like to more so discuss of what are the ins and outs of this? What are the things we really need to consider before we even say, yes, we're going to change the ordinance? got 15 Panera Breads going in at Pontiac and, and, and North Territorial. Let the best business win. We're not saying we're going to change the order. No, I understand. Right. Right. I think we're getting, I think yeah. we're getting. Okay. Okay. I, I think, think we've already gone not, through all ahead. of the things and the questions and the concerns of this. And, and I think, um, I, I, I don't think it's going to hurt to have more discussion on this. Um, do we just need more discussion on it? What do you think? I mean, we got a motion oh, yeah. Okay, so do but do we need more guidance from Paul of what things could look like? Because it's it's kind of like the battery thing. It's so open ended. It doesn't it doesn't provide enough guidance for yes, us to get do. to the end. Okay, so so does this? Did I read it wrong or? I, I probably would have, I've only heard it once, so I guess I'd probably need to I mean, hear it and what are you from there directly. Is that what you're reading? Is that, that we need more investigation, have, more material? Yeah, we have to it. address this. And yes, the language that's going to be drafted could be proposed language for an amendment. That's what it is. We got to talk about it, understand it. When they, when Paul gives us the information, uh, I'm certain he'll give scenarios around the information and then we can further discuss it. But we need to see, if we're taking this step, what it looks like. That's a fair conversation to have. Yeah, oh, absolutely. The uh, board put the stamp on it after we say this is the way to, uh, to read that goes to the board and if they don't like it, they send it back. Well, it may, not even, it may not even be approved by us. Yes, either way. So, okay. All right, so we've got the motion. We've got a second. Did we do the motion? No, we didn't. I think Daryl seconded. Yeah, I did. So this is to create discussion just to see what it's looked like. 
we're not going to have a draft that we could approve next meeting no. and put into place. Sure. I, I, I we could. Yeah. We could. You know, I do want a draft. I want a draft too. I want two things. I want to see what it looks like in the draft, and I want to see what, you know, what the discussion points are. You have to consider um, all aspects of this. So I think we should just leave it as is. We don't, have to, we don't have to like it, just have to vote on it. A, uh, okay, I agree. All right, okay. Mike, I like the way you explain that thing. No, it's fine. fine. No, it's fine. Okay. Okay. We'll do a roll call vote. and direct staff to further make changes to the proposed language for drive throughs for restaurants and fast food establishments for the local commercial zoning district as discussed tonight at the meeting for further consideration. Con? Yes. Frost? Yes. Huntsman? Yes. Lewandowski? Yes. McLaughlin? Yes. Merlo? Yes. Rizzo? Yes. May I ask you a question at this point? This is me. I'm sorry, I'm going to just thought of it literally after I just said yes. Propose, make changes to the proposed. What is the proposed? That is, I mean, there's wording in here, but it's not, it, this isn't a. The proposed language is to allow for fast food, or to allow for a drive-through and local commercial. Okay, what, it's what, just the statement. It's not right. so what it would be like in an ordinance at this point. Okay. So what we would do is put some, some draft language together okay. for you to consider, react to, make changes to, etc. Okay. Thank you. time we will open the public hearing for the text amendment commercial battery energy storage in the agricultural residential district opened at 843 okay Paul, did you want to do your brief summary? Sure. Uh, so, once again, this is a request to do a zoning ordinance text amendment to allow for and regulate battery energy storage systems in the township. Um, so, as you all recall, we brought forth a memo back in March talking about the new legislation that's coming forward that will become effective in November. Um, wherein it essentially preempts local zoning regulations to cite these uh, three different renewable uh, energy uh, facilities. So solar, wind, battery energy storage. Currently you've got a solar ordinance that we updated and a wind ordinance that we updated a couple of years ago. <clears throat> We did not do anything with uh, battery energy storage. If you recall from our memo, um, commercial scale uh, facilities that are above a certain megawatt capacity uh, would fall into that category that the state would regulate unless the local ordinance, excuse me, the local municipality had a um, compatible ordinance. So you could pass an ordinance that would be compatible with what the state regulations are and then maintain your control. There's still some questions about a few things that they aren't specific about um, that, that potentially could be a test if you uh, drafted an ordinance that had um, some of those regulations in it that weren't addressed through the state legislation. 
um, that may or may not apply as our ability to regulate them. I'll talk a little bit about more about that in a second. Um, so for battery energy storage facilities, the um, uh, 50 megawatts is the capacity that would fall into that category. Um, and so the ordinance that was presented to us uh, essentially indicates that that is the intent, is for those uh, facilities over 50 megawatts. Um, they essentially kind of mimicked uh, our solar ordinance, which would not be considered a compatible ordinance or a CREO um, per, the, per the state legislation because of some of the things that we have in there, um, like the setbacks that aren't compatible or the, um, we do have screening requirements. The state legislation is silent on the screening requirements. The applicant has uh, presented those as, as the language. Um, so that may be something that, that could fly. Uh, that, would, that would be something that would be a test, I think. Um, the setbacks are all pretty consistent, but slightly different. I would suggest that if you did move forward with this, we would make sh we would make those setbacks consistent with what the state regulations are, and we we address those in a um, table here in our memo. Um, the maximum noise sound limit is uh, 55 decibels um, per the state act. The applicant has indicated 65, uh, which is consistent with our. Um, solar ordinance, but I think we could drop that down to the 55 to be consistent with uh, the state requirements. Um, the setbacks that they propose are generally consistent, except that the state uh, requirement is 300 feet from the nearest point on the outer wall of a residential structure, and they've suggested 75. So, so there are some tweaks that, that I think that we would want to make to this language uh, if you were really intending for this to be um, a CREO or a compatible ordinance. Um, I think that if you went forward with this language right now, this particular applicant would probably uh, submit an application and establish their use based on this language that is perhaps slightly more restrictive than the state requirements. But if you're going to go through the effort of updating your ordinance, I would say we'd want to make tweaks to make sure that it is a compatible <laughs> ordinance, um, albeit you know, there may still be some questionable items out there that are not clearly addressed that are only going to be tested, I think, once um, once this act is in effect and people start regulating in that regard. And so the, the two big questions in my mind at this point are, can we regulate it based on zoning district and can we regulate things like uh, screening um, over and above the, 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 basically the state, which is silent on those things. Um, so. Uh, I believe in their application they suggested that it would be permissible in light industrial, general industrial, and agricultural residential. Um, so that's, that's kind of a real brief overview. Like I said, we kind of went over a lot of this back in March, um, and you have my memo in front of you, and you have the language that the applicant has presented. Um, so happy to hear discussion, happy to try to answer questions. I know the applicant is here too if you want to ask them questions. Question, Paul. Um, it's been a while since we touched bases with this. Um, the battery storage facilities are allowed in residential ag zoned areas. Is that, was that a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just been a while since we touched bases on this stuff. Was the battery storage facility there allowed in residential ag areas? So currently we don't have an ordinance that regulates them at all. So they're not they're not listed as a permitted use in the in the township. And that was the stance that you all took a year or so ago when we first talked about this. Now that the state legislation has come forward, they're basically saying they would preempt any local zoning to cite one of these things. They did not talk about zoning districts. So if if we updated the ordinance and said it could only be permitted in industrial or it could only be permitted in res ag or if you did a, a overlay district that only permitted it in certain areas or within a certain distance of a power trunk line or something like that, I'm not sure that that language would fly ultimately after we get to November when the state act goes into effect. Um, not to say that we couldn't try that. That would be that would be a test that I think the township would have to be willing to 
engage in and could, could very well lead to potential litigation if somebody or the state could simply say no your your ordinance is not a, a compatible ordinance and you lose your ability to then uh, uh, administer it. However, I think that's what we talked about last time when the state did come out with their ordinance as far as battery one to see what what it all entailed before we decided anything, didn't we? Yeah, so right, yeah. If you want to get your, get your public comment, then we can do more discussion for sure. Okay. You guys have any questions? Anybody want to speak? Are you the applicant? I am the applicant, okay. or I represent the applicant. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Elliot Browning. I'm a project developer for Key Capture Energy. I actually saw a lot of you probably a uh, year and a half ago, about my first week into a job at Key Capture. <laughs> I was sitting next to a colleague of mine uh, who kind of presented the topic to you initially. I think it was January of 2023. Uh, similar conversation to this, but without a specific text mm -hmm. amendment before you for your consideration. We essentially just came and um, essentially we are interested in building an energy storage project in your jurisdiction and saw that there was no permitting pathway to do so without um, getting a text amendment put forth. So uh, like I just mentioned, we were here kind of introducing energy storage generally. I believe someone from the University of Michigan or Michigan State was here talking about that as well. Um, and at the, at the conclusion of that meeting, it seemed like there's generally not a lot of interest in having an energy storage project, and simultaneously, like uh, Commissioner Frost just mentioned, there's kind of buzz around the state legislature about something happening with respect to permitting. So we kind of uh, put, put the project on the back burner, so to speak, just to see what the, the legislature would do. As Paul just described, they've obviously acted now, so the state has uh, essentially just created this like permitting preemption of uh, solar, wind, energy storage projects of a certain size threshold. Um, however, the PSC and the, essentially like PSC and Eagle generally are interested in developers working with communities and partnering with communities and permitting locally. Um, as a matter of fact, I was just at a conference a month or two ago where one of the chairmen of the PSC said something to the effect of like, I hope my, my office gets no applications for this uh, this process. They, they, would, they would prefer everyone work with the local jurisdictions. We would prefer to work with the local jurisdiction. Uh, so that's essentially why I'm here before you today. Uh, we have worked with our attorneys. We chatted with Paul briefly. Um, and we put forth this text amendment uh, for your consideration today. It's essentially based largely off of the uh, commercial solar uh, ordinance you guys already have in place. Our, our assumption in drafting this and preparing this for you was that you've already passed this, uh, these provisions. Presumably, they were accept acceptable to you in the solar context. Presumably, um, a similar framework would be acceptable, or at least a good starting point to, to, to start to start talking about energy storage. Um, so essentially, like like Paul was describing, at this point in time, there are kind of three pathways through which we can get our project permitted. Uh, the first would be for you all to pass a uh, compatible renewable energy ordinance. Like Paul mentioned, those are something that are in line with the state framework. Uh, and then when you have a compatible ordinance, you are able to compel a developer to uh, permit locally. They are not allowed to go around and get permitted through the PSC. Uh, the second option, which is the option that we proposed, was a, what we just like, it's not a legal term, but we're describing it as a workable ordinance. That is an ordinance that is more restrictive than the state's framework. So the local jurisdiction is not allowed to compel the developer to pursue local uh, permitting. However, the workable ordinance is exactly that. It's supposed to be workable. It's supposed to be preserving a town's interests that are important to them while simultaneously being palatable for a developer uh, and something that they can um, finance and construct and essentially like pursue as a viable project. Then the third option, which um, is not, I, like obviously not 
ideal or not the preferred pathway is the state permitting framework. So essentially what we put for, what we put forth for you today is this workable ordinance. We wanted to get something, especially given our context with jurisdiction and your, under, your uh, previously articulated concerns around energy storage, we wanted to uh, essentially put forth a, a first draft for your consideration to uh, essentially adopt regulations that are workable for you as a jurisdiction to protect your township's interests in the context of potential future energy storage developments. So um, essentially, I, I also wanted to be specific here in, in my conclusion here about like what my, my ask is to you today. Like I don't really want to get too bogged down in the specific noise requirements, the setbacks, I think it would be helpful for uh, me as the applicant and, and you as the, the township here to just provide a general sort of direction as to uh, where the wind's blowing with respect to your your uh, your stance on energy storage. Like, okay, do we want to scrap the workable idea and go straight to compatible so we can compel any developer who wants to build an energy storage project to come before us? Or do you want to direct Paul to perhaps work with me uh, to kind of craft a workable ordinance. You guys might discuss whatever interests are important to, for you all to protect, be that setbacks or screening or fire safety. Um, and then we can work together. We can put together a text amendment. And then at a subsequent meeting, you can really hash out the specifics of that amendment. Or if that's not uh, what you're inclined to do, you can just totally, totally scrap that idea. Say, nope, the state's the state's got this one. We're gonna we're gonna pass on this, table this indefinitely, and we'll see you at the PSC in uh, November. Uh, so that's essentially why I'm here. Happy to answer any questions you may have about energy storage generally. I know you guys probably been thinking about this for a while since the legislature acted a while ago, but uh, I'm here here to be a resource and hopefully to uh, partner with you going forward. So thanks. So this is the current text amendment that they're proposing. It does allow it to be on residential ag and barrels and where it's up against your next year, including subdivisions with a million dollar house and tank and vehicles, wells, and all that stuff. I think it sounds like an industrial slash uh, some form of in, either light or at least uh, industrial use, not a residential ag use for property. It just feels like just for the purpose of batteries, the chemicals, the storage. And we have miles and miles of IPC wires that they can connect to throughout the township that are connected to industrial property. Do you have any questions for him? Well, I, I yeah. don't I'm know. I'm just curious, just to add. From an educational just standpoint, you know, I guess it's probably a little bit earlier to talk about technologies and all the other aspects of it. You mentioned the same thing as well, but uh, that's obviously we're all probably sitting here, you know, we've kind of seen solar, we've seen wind, but we don't know a whole lot about battery, battery storage, other than, you know, what we're hearing about the cars, which I know this is different, but it still is something to be concerned about, seeing as how we are all on you know, well or a water is all coming from the ground and that you know, chemicals could possibly get to and or having our fire department or anybody else being able to, you know, deal with whatever happens. So just reassurance to whoever lives in the to entire township. Bonnie, did you have a question? I did, but I asked it once before and I got the, I'll probably get the same answer. Would you like to repeat it? Well, when we started out, we had a blight ordinance, and the blight ordinance put in something about uh, storage containers. They were called carnexes. Now, as I understand it, these things that are going to hold batteries are going to be using the same format and the same kind of thing. Now, are we going to make them have roofs over it and cement platforms underneath them? 
like we have for the general public who wants to use a storage container? Or are we just going to let them put up little boxes with whatever they got? And as you, if you remember, Paul said, we don't have a leg to stand on about that. And I think it's, I think it's kind of ridiculous to have double standards like that. <coughs> What happens when the state gets involved? Is there a restriction on the height of these containers right now from the state? I don't believe so, but I'd have to check the language of that. Okay. Not, not to my knowledge. Okay. What, what was the main what was the main uh, influencer to being able to drop from ten down to five acres for a fifty thousand megawatt? Uh, for a for a five for a for a fifty megawatt project? Yeah. That is. Uh, so it's reduction in lot size from 10 acres to 5 acres. What's the biggest knob that got turned that got it there? You know, so I think that was just uh, like accounting for the realities of energy storage. Uh, just doesn't take up as much acreage. So so in our memo, Bart, I think you're referencing the, change, the difference between what we have in our solar ordinance versus what, what they are proposing in battery energy storage. About five acres is really all you need for the megawatt capacity that's regulated. So, so ten, 10 acres is probably more reasonable for a commercial solar field versus a commercial do, we, do you have anything that you could provide us that gives a visual or a pictures example of a previous project? And hey, Bart. Should we call uh, Paul? Should we call? I'm sorry. Should we oh, close yeah, this? Yeah, you're right, Pam. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we we're we're yeah, 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 no, you're good. We're, all right. That was so. I was going to ask: Is there anyone else that has any? I, I just want to ask the question: Is there a final written document from the state and all the regulations for battery storage? My understanding is they're still in draft. The, the regulation. <laughs> what they have promised is that the regulations will be ready and out by November. So there really isn't. We don't there. know what they are. So we're voting on something very plausible, right now. Could, could I? Uh, so, so the state legislature has passed the the law, which has a, a, a number of regis, uh, a number of regulations. It has as use standards specific to each different use, and then a litany of application requirements. What? Uh, so the PSC still needs to promulgate rules pursuant to that legislation. Uh, so like there, there are points of clarification that the PSC needs to make, but the broad structures of the, the state preemption are, are in place. I, I, I do. Is. Absolutely well. Me too. I'm on it. Does anyone else have any questions, contributions? <clears throat> okay. Let's see how fast Bruce can read that document. additional contributions um, we're not going to lock you up we just don't usually work that way um, we will close the public hearing at 904 substation is that the catch so it, it will it will need to interconnect to the transmission system at some point so that can be either be through a, uh, a high voltage line or a transmission level substation okay so you can't just 
use any other industrial property, you need you need that subsidy. It, yeah, it needs to be adjacent to electrical infrastructure, or at least have easement access through a parcel or two to yes. electrical infrastructure. The best business case is being right next door. Your copper wire is cheap. And we have ITC lines that go completely east and west and north and south to right. right. several locations that have those high tension right. high lines, including by the landfill where they used to have a generator that had energy to it. He's saying he needs to be by that substation. Huh? No, he's saying he needs to be by wires that can connect. Yes, you, need to be near, in, you need to be near infrastructure or have right-of-way access to that infrastructure. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Is there any scenario where you don't need to be next to a substation? Uh, so it would be, if we were next to a transmission line, that would be an acceptable location. One, one uh, sort of like o overarching issue with respect to the location of the property, and like going back to where I said the, the PSC needs to issue guidance on this topic, is the state law is silent with respect to whether or not jurisdictions can specify uh, like the zoning districts. So there are like some attorneys who would advise that if a jurisdiction adopts a limitation on zoning districts, then the ordinance is no longer compatible and the township can no longer compel a developer to pursue local regulation. Uh, and, and just to be completely candid with you, I think you're all, or at least you are now, cognizant of the fact like the, the land the land interest we have, I guess, yeah, you would be cognizant because we had to uh, identify our land interest to submit this application. It is adjacent to or catty corner to the Coventry substation off of Tower Road. Um, so like when, when- Same corner of that intersection. Uh, or opposite. It's kind of like Northwest, North of that substation. Um, but the, 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 point, the point of that being, um, for, for, in order for us to pursue local, local permitting, it would need to be a permitted use in the agriculture or residential district. So if, if, if that is something that, as a, as a board, is unpalatable for you all, then it'll, it'll force our hand and we'll functionally have to go to the state for permitting. But I thought, did you just say the answer wasn't there yet? They said they're silent on the jurisdiction. They're, they're silent. So, we, so in other words, we don't we don't know, or we do know. So the like, it, it, it's it sort of depends. They're silent. There's no answer, so there's no force to the PSC, is there? So it, it depends on your your legal interpretation of the issue. This would be. You getting, want my legal interpretation? <laughs> it, so you're you're getting into a uh, sort of like wonky area of administrative right. law, like how much authority did the legislature confer to the PSC? Mm -hmm. I, I think a plain reading of the text is that any, so like the state the state law did not prohibit or did not specify that it has to be in any district. It says it's allowed uh, essentially functionally out of anywhere. So that for a local jurisdiction to say that it is limited to certain districts, that is necessarily more restrictive than the state framework, which did not. Therefore, like this local law that restricted it to certain districts would be preempted. But that would obviously be your, ta like your township attorney would want to opine on that and that sort of thing. So, so that, that, that is where I suggested that that would be a test. That would be something that you would, as a township, test the legislation. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, I, our, our attorney may advise, <laughs> as Elliot suggested, against yeah. that because of the, the kind of plain text reading. Of sure, I'm just trying to follow along and understand when, there, when there's no answer that what the answer is. Well, it, it's not that there's no answer. They did not. They did not say anything about the ability to use zoning to use the zoning district. And so, since they didn't say that, the assumption is that it would be permitted in any district. And if you restricted it by district, then you would not have a compatible ordinance. Hmm. Did you guys look at any other properties that, if you, um, I, I like that you know of your three pathways, um, the Creo method. Um, did you look at anything that would be in our industrial area or general commercial, that section over there? So the, the way like our company has historically looked for sites 
has been to look based off of the analysis of a particular substation, like just in terms of like how the grid works, like the substations are all nodes, and they have various characteristics with respect to like essentially how much they're going to cost to upgrade to connect our projects. So all that is to say, when we were when we were looking for locations to build a project, we looked at substations across Michigan. This one looked particularly favorable, so we reached out to the people in the vicinity of this substation, uh, acquired a land interest near the substation, and then where we are limited now is we have put a interconnection request to the regional grid operator for that exact location and that exact point of interconnection. So now at this point in the process to change the location of the project would functionally put us back at the start of the study process, which would delay the time by four years or so. Um, so long, like short answer to your question, no, we have not considered uh, other locations in this uh, jurisdiction for our project just by virtue of how our business kind of uh, structures its land <coughs> acquisition. I understand. When you said acquired a land interest, do you mean that you actually purchased property? You have the property? Or so you have we have an land? option to purchase or lease a piece of property. Contingent upon. I think this is what we talked about back in March that we didn't come up with something the state was going to force our hand anyways and it was a no win situation I mean, we come up with something well but it almost kind of sounds like the, if we even where there's holes it's then it doesn't yeah <laughs> well is there anything in the state right now on the state side that sits there and talks about a building pipe there is no that I'm aware of. So the, I think that the, perhaps the benefit to creating a, a workable ordinance versus a straight compatible ordinance is that you could add some things that would make this project more palatable to the township, like screening, um, perhaps secondary containment or something, if the applicant was willing to do that. And it sounds like, and this is kind of what we all speculate, is that the state doesn't really want to be in the business of doing this permitting. They would rather leave that in the hands of the local jurisdiction as long as they're allowing for it to happen. I think a lot of the questions are, we don't, we don't, we, and maybe it's for you, uh, Elliot, is we're not seeing what you're willing to work with us on. What are, I mean, the only thing that's out there open is screening is, is or that they're silent on is screening. We're, we're, I guess we don't really have an understanding of what you're willing to work with us on to ensure the, you know, the protection of our, our residents and our community. And, I, and the reason we talk about location is on page three, Paul, of your report, proposed language from, from the applicant is, 75 feet from the nearest point on an external wall of any residential structure, but the PA 233 is 300 feet. So would that be an area to to work with, or? Yeah. What? Well, I mean, he's. I think what he's done is great because sometimes on things like this, you can kind of work better from a, from a changing something that's in front of you rather than creating something from a blank sheet of paper. So he's given us a discussion document. You know, am I going to agree to a 75 when the state says 300? Yeah, no, not, not a chance. You know, but once again, kind of parallel to the previous uh, topic, other considerations need to, be, need to be in there to make this thing complete. And going back again to what is our duty here? We're here to protect our citizens you know, to, to make it something that is, is palatable to them, uh, what's in their best interest. And, you know, I guess my look at it is, and, you know, once again, maybe it's attorneys, cons consideration of attorneys is, if the state doesn't say it, maybe we say it, 
and then if there's a, a, a hint of litigation or something, well, then maybe we take it out. But I think we got to go in with not just compatible. It needs to be compatible and beyond considering the township. I think we still have a lot of questions that maybe yeah, well, you can help yeah, with. I mean, huge you know, well, I mean, we talk right about there. like the whole money thing in here, you know, about townships getting what, it, what some sort of, um, what's the 150,000 or oh yeah I'd be happy to speak to that and, be, and because you know we our tax structure is a little bit different here I'm sure you're very aware of what it is and they talk about have you know contributing tax base or whatnot um, that's not really true so I mean I guess you know I think what we're looking at is is and our concerns are with something so new putting this in the backyard of, of, of people right close to their homes what protections do they have what what can what are what is your company willing to do to help protect the residents when there's you know like setbacks or if there's a fire if there's an emergency you know all those kinds of things that's what we're looking at mm -hmm. I, I spent Tuesday through Friday of this week at an MIS at a, at a student competition for electric vehicles judging, recommending, et cetera, et cetera. On Friday afternoon, as I'm pulling out, there was a fire. A battery accumulator, I call it accumulator, went rogue. You know what the instruction was? Mm -hmm. Don't be downwind. Mm -hmm. I know that. Is there something, you know, so what, what I'm, looking at is things like if the state does not mention something like you know you can't be upwind of you know up the prevailing wind the typical you know prevailing winds that go through there you can't be upwind of a residential you have to be beyond something like that we should be deeply considering safety uh, i asked paul do we know if there's a building height well if the state doesn't touch it and they can get from five acres down to two and a half acres by stacking them twice as high well, if the state doesn't mention it, we should. You know, does it look like a seat tainer or is it, you know, wooden seat or siding to bring in the whole, that discussion. I think we need to go beyond what the state is and feel it out. And, you know, we're in June, they're coming out in November. You know, if we can make a change this quick, we can make a rechange quicker. <clears throat> So if there's something that all of a sudden the state then comes out and we read it letter for letter, you know, dot I cross T and we say, okay, we're not compatible. We understand that this won't hold up. Let's make a let's make us another change to it immediately after you know, December, January, whatever. I'd say so be it. But I think we have to take the first step in establishing the ground. I think you're also I mean, we're already crossing the bridge to accept the proposal. Um, you know, yeah, we got to do something. Well, yeah. well this, is, this is the situation, right? Uh, the state does not specify, you know, residential. And, and, you know, what you're proposing to do is to drop this into the back of a lot of people's houses in a residential area. And if it's not specified in the law yet, mm -hmm. then maybe it's worth a challenge on the onset. Yeah. And I don't know what our palate is to take that challenge and then say, okay, we're forced to, but someone needs to give an answer to that to say, hey, is this even allowed in a neighborhood? Yeah. I mean, you're literally, this is an agricultural residential zone that you guys have identified. We're offering to work with you, but where you want to go is someone's backyard or a lot of someone's backyard. And that's the pushback that we have. We have industrial areas that you could link up to, but because it's, it'll be inconvenient for you guys to the tune of four years, you don't like the idea. And so what we're asking is, is if that's the case, we can either take what you propose and start working with it, or we just take a step back and challenge the initial um, law that the legislation put out that they're going to give clarification to, but challenge it. This is in someone's backyard, and that needs to be specified first, and then I think the conversation can start um, as to whether or not we want to uh, include setbacks or whatever the case may be. I think there's a bigger conversation here, and I don't know what our city's palette is for legislate or uh, for litigation, but um, you know that 
that can't be looked you know, that can't be looked over well that's why i said if there's no answer why is why is the assumption well, I mean, some people I guess want to look at it. I thought it was just me, though. Does the state call for any secondary containment to be brought on site? Or? It does not. No? So, I mean, you might want to look at that. I, I asked so, last time, at what temperature does steel melt? And what temperature does lithium batteries burn at? There you go. So, primary, secondary, secondary. To that question, if you guys are interested in that kind of thing like if you're interested in uh, environmental concerns maybe these are questions that you ask of the applicant where they're willing to work with you and what that looks like and see if it's something that you find acceptable I, I don't know if you guys have explored doing secondary containment or what what kind of information you have about the technology back to Bruce's original question what technologies are you using what are the environmental protections what can we as a community expect to see out of you in addition to the environmental concerns if it's in somebody's backyard and we have no recourse on setbacks that's concerning yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of third-party safety recommendation company that could we maybe speak with someone along those lines that you know not affiliated with either one of us and just bring them in and say hey what are things we need to consider what are, what are the things we need to look at here what are the right questions to be asking and, and learn on this because this is yeah it's new to everybody it's, you know it's i love you man but fox <laughs> isn't in charge of the handouts you know that, that's you know no i uh, know i think yeah so I, I think having somebody that can really speak to these things I mean, they got to be out there. I mean, just with automotive. I still like to know what you're going to with the sun. What are in my drive in, in my garage? I'd still like to know what are you willing to work with yeah. us on? What what are the general topics without getting in? I know you said the weeds of setbacks, but there's a huge difference between 75 feet right. and 300 feet. I don't. That's not. Those aren't weeds in a residential area. And, and I think that should, if, if anything comes into that wording, it should be potential. Existing or potential residential, um, or, or just the property line yeah, of your own, just, your own yeah, parcel. Well, yeah. I mean, we have setbacks and stuff so, like that. But yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So what what are you willing to work? No, so I, I think like the, the the sentiment that's underlying all these comments is right. Like this is your opportunity to determine as a community like what interests are important for you to protect. Like we we are amenable to to working with secondary containment. Like if there are concerns around that sort of thing. We're amenable to addressing specific environmental concerns or specific fire safety concerns. Like we, we are not in the business of building like cumbersome, clunky, unsafe projects. These are very expensive, valuable assets for us and we want to build them in a way that the community in which we build them is pleased with and supports and partners with us on. Um, one, uh, like, like there, are, there are concerns about like wind and things. I think a lot of these things could be addressed in setbacks, particularly from like adj adjacent residences. That, although I like just thinking of where this parcel is, there's really not. It's really a, like an agricultural area with a lot of footage in between it and any right. other uh, now, resident. Yeah. Just um, a quick question: This one. How many charge discharge cycles do you get out of one pack, one one building? Uh, like if. You're, so typically, we charge and discharge the battery like one cycle per day. I understand. How many of those do you get? In in total? Yeah. What's the what's the lifetime? Yeah, the so like the pack only comes back to sixty five percent efficiency. So yeah, energy storage project like useful life is estimated between twenty and thirty years, but we plan for augmentation. So like to your point, you're familiar with like batteries degrading over time with their usage. The the project footprint will be designed such that you can add containers. So that as certain cells or certain modules within the system degrade over time, you add completely new ones to supplement such that it still has the same throughput uh, in I terms was, of power. I, it, yeah, but it, okay. I was charge discharge cycles per that cell. I mean, you know, but 500 is a lot of charge discharge cycles for a lithium ion. So you're talking under a year and a half, um, once a day, right? Right. So. I, I think I think this would be a question like better suited yeah. for an engineer uh, or someone. Yeah. Um, I have one more question. Yeah. 
Elliot, you want to work with us, and I, I understand it. Have you have you walked that property? Have you walked up and down Tower Road? Have you walked up and down Joy Road? I, I have. I guess not Joy Road, but I have walked up and down Tower Road. And there there are residences along there. Yeah, there's a bunch. There's a bunch of residences. There's homes. There's horses. This is this is an agricultural residential neighborhood. And you guys have applied to drop your containers right in the backyard of a residential neighborhood. For me personally, and, and certainly you know, we can discuss this, this is a situation where I think uh, the state needs to be challenged on their initial zoning requirements. It may be an uphill battle, but I think it needs to be fought. Um, you know, I don't think we should sit here and start accepting the proposed languages. This is a residential neighborhood. And, don't, you know, don't tell me where you live, but if they were to come drop one in your backyard, do you care about setbacks? No, because you're like, I can still see it, whether it's 50 or mm -hmm. 300 feet. The wind still blows, you can't stop that. You know, there's still a lot of situations that you don't have to live next to, or that your management doesn't have to live next to, that the residences do. There's water that can be affected, there's air that can be affected. We want to work with you, and if you truly want to work with us, I'm sure we can expedite approval into our industrial areas next to power lines that you could transfer uh, your energy back and forth to. But the reason you're getting pushback is because you're looking to put your um, project right behind a bunch of houses. And I would encourage you to walk up and down Joy Road around 6 o'clock at night and see the kids riding bikes, see the horses running around. These are people. And I think we, uh, we need to start thinking a little bit more about challenging the initial um, ruling as opposed to accepting the language of this proposal. Four four years for a company may be a long time, but when somebody plants their family there, it's the rest it's the rest of their life is decades. So it's it is important. But like you said, that's why I asked, have you looked at something else? I kind of figured the answer was no because you're gonna go to I understand that process. Mm -hmm. Um and if we knew more when back when when you guys were here maybe we could have made that recommendation but honestly none of us really knew that <laughs> much and we didn't even know what to ask in the first place but the location is hugely important for us and how close it is to our family members absolutely and just to, to, to briefly respond to and farms just to briefly respond to uh, commissioner Huntsman's point i t t totally acknowledge like very very real visceral concern for the uh like the families in, in that area. Um, just uh, the point about like conformity with, with the broader area, one point I like to uh, raise is that this, this facility is gonna be comparable in size to the existing transmission substation that, that already exists there. So it's not as if we are, this is like an unadulterated vista of like perfectly scenic farmland. There, is, there are large transmission lines and there's a big buzzing transmission infrastructure station. So we're not gonna be completely perturbing, pristine, unused land. There, there is already a very like large- Do you wanna discuss this? Uh, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just like raising- What happens if a capacitor burns? What happens to my well water? What happens to me breathing down? Like, I mean, these, these are specific, these so are specific it's, it's concerns that you can address in your, uh, in your zoning ways. ordinance. Yeah. It's same in some ways, but in different ways. We didn't want to get in the weeds, but I think the weeds are all we have to talk right. about. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, I would, love to, I would love to talk Tyron to an, an expert that understands how, you know, worst of worst, how can these things get, what what are the best mitigation steps to require? I think I your question. Yep, yeah, so I, I think we can reach out and try to find potentially a third party who can help to answer some of these questions. I think that, you know, we may be able to reach out to folks at the state and, and ask the question, you know, how, how, do, how do we expect them to come down on this, the zoning issue, right? Is so, like, like UT, what's U, UTL, the United Technologies Laboratories, you know, you see UTL listed on your plugs and outlets and things like that. I, I wouldn't doubt that they have something. We'll, we'll, we'll find something. We'll, we'll bring the answers back to you. I know you will. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. So is geography not something you guys are willing to work with? Uh, I, I think I think we would probably pursue the state the state pathway before just given given our like sure our, no, fi our financial investment understand. in the project to date. And up. Mike's made a very good point. The state doesn't live in Salem Township. And this is well worth that legal battle to say that we have the right home rule and we believe, from everything I've heard you see tonight, that this application belongs in industrial. It doesn't belong in somebody's backyard. And I think it's worth that fight that you guys should do what you think is right for this community because the state doesn't always get it right. And they got a referendum now, they're out collecting signatures to put the siting of solar and wind back into the hands of the local jurisdictions. Don't cave because you got an applicant here. At the very least, if you go to court, it's going to take time that might be on our side. Well, I, I, Linda, I love it. I agree. Do, can we even say at this point there would be a fight from what we know from the state? We don't know. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think maybe it's go to the state and say, hey, state, great you're doing this. Understand you're, 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 this, this is the way you're going. But put something into this language. Put it only in industrial commercial. We have areas in our township that someone came in and said, okay, whatever level, but it, we have areas if they want to come in, great, it's zoned for that, the local fire department can handle that, be there in two seconds instead of at, at the more, at, you know, like the urban service district and, and respond to it. Maybe it's the, it's the time we just go to the state and say, please put, the, put language in here in this way. Or maybe, maybe I, that's something that our expert can help recommend yeah. of how we can go that avenue. Um, and when you say putting up putting up a fight for something that's important for us, um, we're I think you need to create an ordinance. Create an ordinance. Yes. That spells, spells this out. Or the trustees would agree with this. That it needs to be done. And, and we started on it. And if we need to go for a fight, we'll go for a fight. So. <laughs> but huh. we need to create that order. Yeah. Yes. Well, and we just we did start it. We did start it. We just uh, and it was what like two months ago, maybe three months now. And we just need to finish it. But now we now we know a little bit more than we what we did three months ago. We still need some little bit of expert in there to help us, and then uh, we can take it step by step. And fortunately for us, we're not a typical township that is understaffed and under budget. Well, and Pam, the other thing we just heard tonight, too, is that if the applicant doesn't like your ordinance, he's willing to have a fight. So we already know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make the ordinance right for Salem. Don't worry about the applicant, because he's already told us, and it's on video, that if he doesn't get what he wants, he's going to fight it. So do do what you guys think are right. That's, as mm -hmm. you guys have said over and over tonight, that's why you're sitting at that table, is to do what's right and go back to your, your master plan. Um, somebody touched about the health, safety, and welfare of the community. You have very clearly defined reasons why you have a master plan, why you have a zoning ordinance. And don't let somebody tell you, hey, if I don't get what I want, we're going to have a fight. Okay, we're, we've already said we'll fight. But well, do the right thing. No, I think we're all on the same page in this. And, and we always talk about the master plan, and that's what guides us. So, yeah. yeah go that's ahead, the last Mike. thing. And just, and just for you, like, I understand that you're just the face, and so this is this is just you know. This is just <laughs> personal. I take, I take <laughs> this is just us discussing. Uh, but certainly, you don't know this that Salem Township does want to work with you. Uh, we just want to work on different terms. Mm -hmm. So please share our heart, you know, with your, yeah. you know, with your higher ups, um, you know. But we are going to fight for you know for our people and and uh, and uh, um, kind of our position. But certainly, if you're open to a conversation, the doors are open. And we certainly can help expedite things for you, so it won't take that for your, you know, a proposed maybe thought. Um, so we can have a good relationship, and we can work together. Um, and if not, then you know I understand that too. But I just want to make you know that public. Okay. It was a promise of a fight. There was a promise of they go to state route, right. which is you know just 
starts in November, maybe if the state can actually deliver something. Like that. So, well, you know, we're we're always trying to work with people, whether it's the whether it's the coffee shop, the flower bar. We 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 we're, we're trying to create something and not just have a book or let people just come in and all over the township. But I mean the. The safety and well-being of our community people people want to live here for a reason and it's up to us to help protect it and represent all of them can i can i throw something in what, what's the name of your business enchanted up so we keep calling it the flower bar but it's, oh, it's, it's yeah. 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 there's so much traffic i don't get over there <laughs> oh, but at least it moves it does it move traffic, so. not if you're coming for me in arbor we've got great breakfast challenges do they? Yeah. No, it's a cute, it's a cute area, and I'm glad it's open again. I didn't realize. And that. if I may say, you know, if if we don't make it competitive for small businesses, then there won't be anything left to be cute. It yeah. will all look the same. It will all look like Starbucks. It will all look like. Oh no, that's not happening. Well, it will actually happen because small businesses don't even have a fighting chance right now. No, we understand. We understand. But like we said, we're getting off topic now. But it's not just that location, right? We've got to consider the whole township. So, but six by six, we should be able to do that. Okay. Do anybody else have any more any more questions? And, and Mike, that was a that was a great ending point because we do want to we do want to work with you know the organization, but location is important to us. And one uh, final comment that I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the. Uh, um, Eagle has, has stood up some program called Renewables Ready Communities Award. It is a state-run grant program that gives uh, communities who permit and host eligible renewable projects, of which ours would be one, uh, $5,000 per megawatt, which is $3,000 per megawatt more than a community is entitled through to through a host development agreement. Um, so for a project of our size, that would, um, going through the state permitting process, that would be $200,000. Permitting locally and then receiving the grant would be $500,000. Define, define renewable energy. Uh, renewable, I mean, it's, it's, a, I mean, it's an interesting, just, just define, somewhat pedantic topic. Because like, <laughs> no, like, it's like battery energy storage, we're charging for a mix of energy on the grid as a standalone project, not technically renewable, but it is often lumped under that, mm -hmm. uh, that umbrella. But, as okay. defined as defined uh, storage and uh, more weeds, more weeds. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's no, play this game. Right no, we're not playing this game. Play it on your own time. Define storage. No. <laughs> we know about storage. It's, it's, and just, okay. And just real quick, it's important sure. here, because I think you need to know so you can, you know, obviously tell your people. We appreciate, you know, understanding that there is money out there. This is not about money, and just be very clear to your, you know, your management. Um, you know, we don't need it. We want to preserve the land for people, animals, that kind of thing. So um, I appreciate the thought there, but that holds no weight with us. Understood? Yeah. Okay. So. <coughs> okay, I make a motion to postpone action and direct staff to make changes to proposed language for the regulation of commercial scale battery energy storage systems as discussed at tonight's meeting for further consideration. Okay, thank you. Okay, should we do a roll call vote please? Um, yes. Ross? Yes. Huntsman? Yes. Lewandowski? Yes. Lachlan? Yes. Rillo? Yes. Rizzo? Yes. <coughs> Walker? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Number nine. Old business items, none. Reports of commissioners and correspondence. Board of Trustees. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I guess the only thing that would be pertinent to us is that we're going to work on a drafting a special assessment district working for the USD. Okay. 
CBA? No business. Land preservation, conservation? Meeting tomorrow night, and we'll be looking at um, talking about some potential opportunities that we might be able to put together for preserving some properties and also working on uh, uh, finding the uh, driveway access to the Shatter Preserve. So we have a couple car parking there on the road park. Okay. Planning consultant review. Uh, so there's a couple of projects that are in the works. Um, we did speak to the gentleman who owns, uh, well, we tried to speak to the gentleman who owns the party shop at the corner of North Territorial and Old North Territorial. They're looking to potentially update that site and turn it into a gas station. As you heard tonight, uh, Edis has submitted an application to re-establish that as a gas station and potentially a drive-through. Um, uh, and then there are a couple of projects that we're looking at on Chubb Road in the industrial area, um, either existing sites that are uh, adding additions or modifying their site, um, or a new site off of Chubb Court. Um, so all, all of those are kind of in the works, and as soon as those site plans are ready, we'll bring them in front of you. Anything on Seven Mile and Pontiac Trail, Matt? Seven Mile and Pontiac Trail. The log cabin store? Uh, no, uh, I did speak to that, the, the owner of that property, and he's looking at different opportunities to bring in some additional income, whether that be a restaurant or he did talk about the potential of petitioning the township to look at doing food trucks. So that may be a conversation that we might want to have in the future, whether or not we want to allow for or regulate food trucks. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then. Uh, Mr. Stromer, who's here in the audience tonight, uh, is getting really close on uh, the uh, landscape supply uh, facility, so we're excited to see that open up and get running. Everybody's been watching watching your progress for a long time here, so. Yeah, that's nice. You guys know what the name of that place is? Gardens. Salem, Salem Gardens. Gardens. Sure. Salem Gardens. 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 That's why I'll be ready in two weeks. Thank you. Okay, approval of minutes April 15th, 2024. I make a motion to approve the minutes of April 15th, 2024 as submitted. I second. All those in favor of approving the minutes of April 15th, 2024 say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Public comment. Okay, none. Chairperson comment? None. Adjournment is. Oh, you got the wrong hours. 944? 944, thank you. Oh. Just a quick question for you. I'm having trouble locating. Oh, I'm sorry. 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 Oh, I'm I saw that. I see you guys almost have finding that. Yeah, I went to Willow the other night. I went to Willow, they had a commercial like that. I picked up some kind of trees I had. Oh, you got big ones. You got big ones. Oh, thank you.